He's protecting and defending, delivering on promises he made. With a watchful eye that never sleeps, my Father guards and keeps me. He's faithful, my God is faithful. He never has forsaken me, forever he'll remain to be faithful. My God is faithful, for he's the perfect Father.
Take a songbook, please turn to 127. Number 127, and we'll sing together, I am so glad Jesus loves even me. Stand up if you would. Let's sing it out tonight, all three verses. Don't hold back on me. Sing it out. 
I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still Jesus loves me where I stray back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Think about it. I'm so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. I'm the last. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Lovely, great singing. Turn over to 99, number 99, and we'll sing A Shelter in the Time of Storm. Amen. All four verses, number 99. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Are we on verse 3? That's what I thought. Amen. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm on the last. O oh, rock divine, O oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Me thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. O oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Amen. That's great singing. Anybody got any prayer requests tonight? I'll take three prayer requests. Anybody got anything? Yes. Carol Messina. Okay. Guarded condition, ICU in Roswell, definitely will be praying for her. This is, you said your daughter-in-law? Stepdaughter. Stepdaughter, okay. Gotcha. Definitely will pray for her. Anything else? Yes. Mrs. Verspor has an angiogram on Monday. Mrs. Verspor has an angiogram on Monday. Pray for her. One more. Jim Phillips, you, could, you call him your adopted son? Yeah. Yes, Brother, Brother Floyd's adopted son. Possibly had a stroke 
All right, we'll pray for these, and of course we'll pray for the situation in Israel. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your goodness to us and for bringing us together as a family again tonight safely. And I do pray you'd help us to put behind us tonight uh, the um, anxieties of life and help us to focus upon the Word of God, upon what you have for us tonight. Please, uh, Lord, give us what we have need of. Strengthen us spiritually that we might uh, be whole, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, Please, Lord, be with Carol Messina. I pray that you touch her body. I pray that you would give her your grace. And I do pray that you'd be with Mrs. Verspor, Lord. Bless this um, angiogram, Lord, that your will might be done and that your wisdom might be had. And then, Lord, for Jim Phillips, that you might um, work in his life, that you just help him to uh, be healed. I pray that you draw each individual to yourself. Help them to um, see your hand. And I pray, Father, for the situation in the Middle East, in that area that is the apple of your eye. I do pray that you'd um, draw your people to yourself. And Father, as I think of the Word of God and the many times when Israel strayed from you and the difficulties they had to go through, I know that you allowed those times that your people might come to know you in truth for who you are. And I pray that you turn those Hebrew people to their Messiah, Jesus Christ. And uh, please, just uh, watch over them, and Lord, uh, help us to see your hand in our lives, that we might uh, be mindful of the timepiece, and mindful of the end, uh, and just to be uh, vigilant, and to be watching, and circumspect. Please, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. All right, I've got a few announcements for you. Excited to get Brother Case up here to bring the, the lesson tonight on the uh, uh, principles of Christian music. So I did have a great time at the legal seminary. Yesterday it was all day at the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Ashtabula, Ohio. And uh, there were very gracious hosts, um, Brother Jones there, and then Brother Robido, whom we support, who heads up the, legal, the Lighthouse Legal Ministry. I learned a lot, and I'm very hopeful about the things that I learned to help uh, apply them to our church, and I look forward to uh, talking to you about those things. But um, just, I got a year's worth of work to do, um, so pray for me as to how to implement them, uh, the things that will help our church be safe um, legally uh, and such. So please, uh, thank you for allowing me to go, and also Brother Luke as well. Uh, we both uh, were able to learn a lot, so... All right, we got the football tournament, flag football tournament coming up a week from Saturday. So be mindful of that. Pray for the young men as they prepare, pray for their health. And then also we got the teen harvest party Saturday, October 14th from 2 to 4:30 here at the church and all young adults are welcome tomorrow. Uh, the homeschool group is going to Genesee Country Museum. If you plan to come and you haven't already, please sign up in the foyer. If you did respond to me in that group text today, you don't have to sign up. It is ten dollars uh, for the students, twelve dollars for anyone who's not a student. And then uh, let's see, our bus plans to leave at eight forty-five or turn around three. If something changes, we'll certainly give you a call. Uh, oh, and please, and bring a lunch if you would. Bring a lunch. There is a, a snack. There is a snack shop there as well as a gift shop. Uh, Bring money if you want to spend it. So be mindful of that. All right, this Sunday, Brother Kid's going to be preaching Sunday morning. And then we've got a three-man tag team preaching event on Sunday night. So I'll be praying about that and pray for my wife and I as we travel. Pray for my wife. She's not feeling well. Uh, Hopefully she gets better soon so that we can go. That would be a blessing. All right, and then our regularly scheduled outreach this Saturday at 10 a.m. Okay, any questions about that? All right, take your songbook again. And turn to five. Turn to number five. And we'll sing, Oh, for a thousand tongues. Stay seated. All five verses. Think about those words. Sing it from your heart. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, 
the triumphs of his grace. My gracious master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. I always like the phrase in that second verse of assist me to proclaim. You know, we can't even praise God without him helping us praise him. You know, that's how, that's how messed up we are. We do need his help to be aware of his goodness, to be able to praise him in truth. Anyway, verse number three. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that pits our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise ye dumb, your youth tongues employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. He breaks the power of cancelled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. <coughs> Excuse me. One more song. Don't put your songbook away just yet. 430, number 430, just two verses there. But Lord, I need you. 430, let's sing that to the Lord from our heart tonight. <clears throat> Sometimes when life seems gentle and blessings flood my way, I turned my gaze away from you and soon forget to pray. But when the sky grows darker and courage turns to fear, my anxious voice cries upward with words you long to hear. Lord, I need when the sea of life is calm, oh Lord, I need you. When the wind is blowing strong, whether trials come or cease, keep me always on my knees. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, help me to remember I'm weak but you are strong <coughs> heart from you forlorn you are my song although I'm prone to wander and boast in all I do Lord keep my eyes turned upward so I depend on you, Lord, I need you. When the sea of life is oh, Lord, I need you. When the sea blowing strong, whether trials come or cease, keep me always on my knees, Lord, I need you. Amen. Music is a very important part of our life. It makes up a great deal of our life. The world knows how important music is. They, they immerse everything in culture with the music. There's a whole book in the Bible that's about music, and it's all throughout God's Word as well. So I think it's important. Brother Case has actually taught a course on this before. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to us tonight. So, Brother Case, why don't you come on up here and give us the lesson. He did sign a waiver that he would be done earlier than 8.30. So, um, just kidding. All right, Brother Case, it's all yours. What do I got to do here? Open. There we go. All right, I'm going to move this a little bit just so I can be a little closer. I don't know whether to look here, here, or here. So, uh, I'm supposed to... Should be. Can I just bring this up a little bit? Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I, I know I'm supposed to tell a joke, but I don't know if I can beat the Chihuahua joke that uh, Brother Greg told. <laughs> that was really good. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, didn't beat the Chihuahua joke, did it? <laughs> I could tell by the look on my wife's face that was not a good one. <laughs> All right, let's have a word of prayer. Let's get started. Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you for tonight. And Father, I certainly thank you for the opportunity to teach this. Lord, I understand how important music is to you, and I hope to convey that uh, to the folks tonight, just how important music is, the fact that you yourself are a musical being, Father, and, and uh, you even created the everything that you created, Father, you created with sound. You spoke things into existence. And so, Father, we pray, Lord, that you'd bless tonight. Uh, give me the words to say, Father. Help me to, uh, to be clear in everything that, uh, that I explained tonight. And we just ask, Lord, your Holy Spirit would be upon it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, this course is actually based on this book, Music in the Balance. Has anybody read this before? Anybody in here ever read this? Okay, that's good. I'm glad, because if you'd all read it, I'd go home. Um, it's based on this book. And so we're going to go right through. It's, it's got 12 chapters in it. I, we're probably not going to get. We're not going to get 12 chapters done tonight. We might get one or two. We'll see. See how far we go. Um, but uh, Pastor Salini has told me that you know we can continue this at another time. It's not going to be week to week. When we're going to get us go as far as we can, and the next opportunity I have to do it again, we'll take off where I leave off. So. Let's start with Music and the Balance, a Biblical Philosophy of Music. Of course, this is by uh, Dr. Frank Garlock and Kurt Wetzel. How many of you know who Dr. Garlock is? He just passed away uh, just a few months ago. He is the, in the hymnal that you see that we use here, the Majesty Hymnal. He was instrumental in printing that. In fact, he's got some songs in it. How many of you know who Ron Hamilton is? Most of you know Ron Hamilton. He is Ron Hamilton's father, was Ron Hamilton's father-in-law. Uh, so Shelley Hamilton, who we sing quite a bit of music uh, of hers, it was her father. Her father actually wrote this book along with uh, Kurt Wetzel, and they came up with this curriculum that basically, a little bit of humor here, says this gives new meaning to carrying a tune in a bucket. Now, Pastor Slaney told me that if I can get some buckets from Sauter, if we can come in and try this for the choir and see if we can teach them how to uh, be able to hear their own tone. Just kidding, of course. Uh, this is South Korean housewives singing plastic buckets over their heads during a tone-deaf clinic in a department in the store in Seoul. This is a little bit uh, another humor. So we're, we're going to try to dis disintegrate the kidney stone with a three-hour barrage of music by the rock band Pearl Jam. Anybody know who Pearl Jam is? Nobody? Nobody here has ever heard of Pearl Jam? Oh, we got one person that used to listen to garbage. No, <laughs> just kidding. All right, this is probably the most important, one of the, one of the most well-known verses uh, in God's words. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That, to, just that verse alone tells us how important um, music is to God. But we're going to show you a lot more than that tonight. Uh, I'm going to go through the sources and the approach uh, relatively quick because the sources uh, I have to tell I'll preface it by saying that this this book was written back in the I'm thinking early 2000s and many of the sources that are cited were back in the 90s 96 97 99 but it all is applicable today there's not much changed in the last believe it or not in the last 40 years there is not a lot changed if you know, it's gotten worse but this is all still applicable today so uh, we've got over 500 direct music references in the Bible, and we're going uh, we're gonna to see a lot of those tonight and through the, uh, the coming months as we present this. Uh, scriptural principles applied to music. We're going to see a lot of verses tonight that might not be a musical verse. It might not be a, music, uh, a verse that speaks about music, but it can be a verse that can be applied to music or Christian music, the type of music we listen to. So we've got uh, res respected, qualified secular experts. Obviously, we've got medical doctors, sociologists, psychologists, child psychologists, communication experts, musicians, composers, music critics, music musicologists, performers, psychiatrists, scientists, neurologists, music educators. And these are I'm, this is some of the books that we get the quotes. The many quotes that you're going to see are from these books, and these are experts in their field. 
uh, howbeit they, they may be experts in their field, but most of these, I believe, are secular experts. But we're going to find out, you know, the Bible tells us in Luke, uh, I think it's uh, 618, I think he tells us that uh, the, the, the children, the, the, let me see if I can get the exact quote here. Yeah, the children of this world in their generations were the children are, are wiser than the children of light. We've we've known that. We've known that. that. That's that's something that's biblical. God tells us in many instances they are wiser than we are. Because sometimes we just don't we just don't want to admit. So a lot of these are secular so I'm not gonna go do, down through and read every one of them because it will be here all night. There's a lot of them. And a lot of these uh, I may not even use because I've taken some of the slides up because I, I tried to trim this down a little bit. But there are a lot of sources. And as you can see, all of the above are secular sources. Now our goal, are, of course, is to allow the Lord to give us clear direction through his word. That's the important part. We're going to go through his word as to the characteristics of music and the sound that we allow into our churches, our homes, and our everyday lives. Our goal is to give documented evidence and insight about the method, the technique, the message, and the content of contemporary music. Now, contemporary music, when I use that term tonight, I want you to think of contemporary music as being the CCM movement. How many of you know what I'm talking about when I say the CCM movement? That's, the, that's basically what they call Christian rock. So when I say contemporary music, that's, that's what I'm referring to in this particular case. But in actuality, contemporary music is any music that's written today. Any music, that, even Christian music, uh, Ron Hamilton's music, Frank Golick's music, anything that was written in our lifetime is considered contemporary music. But just for this course, what I refer to when I refer to contemporary Christian music, I'm referring to the contemporary Christian rock Christian music, if there could be such a thing. Uh, not all of us are going to come through the series sitting in the same arena, on the same side, in the same section, of the same row, and at the same seat. My prayer is that we will arrive in the same area, in the same side, in the same section, and perhaps most of us will be in the same row. So that was the intro. Now we're going to actually get right into why study music in the Christian life. Why, why is it important? Well, I think it's important, first of all, because it's important to God. One of the key questions is, and I touched on this uh, in a few weeks ago when I uh, spoke for about 10 minutes to you, uh, music being amoral or being neutral. Many people today try to say that music is amoral. Amoral basically means, well, let's take a look at what Webster's Dictionary says um, about morality. Moral, Webster says, relating to or dealing with capable and capable of making the distinction between right and wrong. It was on this also this, uh, uh, describes it as serving to teach or in accordance with the principles of right and wrong. Good or right in the conduct or character, virtuous in conduct, as opposed to immoral. So that's morality, that's, that's being moral. Is music amoral? Webster again, the word amoral, not, con not concerned with moral standards, not to be judged by criteria of morality, neither moral or immoral. In other words, basically what they say in, in, in amoral is, they say that amoral means that you can watch something and it won't have any effect on you whatsoever as far as your character, as far as your being, as far as who you are. It, it won't affect you if it's amoral. But if it's moral, it's going to be, if it's going to have a morality to it, it's either going to be moral or it's going to be immoral. It's going to be one of those two things. If it's either moral or immoral, it's going to, it's going to affect you. It's going to have an effect on you one way or another. So we're, what I'm trying to teach here is the fact that music, is music amoral? I think not. I think it's got a morality to it, and we're going to find out why. But many Christians say yes. There is no such thing, this is a quote, it says there is no such thing as Christian music or only Christian lyrics. What is sacred is the message. We need to stop defending the tune. That was a quote from Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Community Church in California. And he wrote the, the book, The Purpose of Your Own Life. And this is, music is amoral thinking. That's the type of thinking that's, that's being spread or that has been spread throughout the years and is still being spread today. Um, many, many churches out there use the type of music that we're talking about tonight that I'm going to hopefully um, 
be able to show and prove to you that it's something we really should not be allowing in our lives, even in our homes. Many experts in the world say an emphatic no. On July 23, 2003, President George Bush honored uh, concert pianist Van Cliburn with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in a ceremony at the White House. What Van Cliburn said, he said, the language of music is readable, writable, and recitable. Okay? Now, if he's right, if the language of music is readable, writable, and recitable, let's ask a couple questions. Is that, does that which is readable have moral value? It would have to. Sure, you, you can read something good, you can read something bad. There is moral value in what is readable. Does that which is writable have moral value? Of course it does. If, if you're reading it, it's obviously written. So that's which, which is writable has a moral value. And that which is recitable has moral value. Of course we know that's true. Does language have moral value? So we know that language has moral value. Now what I've got to do is make the leap from language to music. Music is the language of emotions. Music is the shorthand of emotions, said Leo Tolstoy. I don't know if you can read that, but I'll, you, know, you probably can, but I'll read it anyway. And uh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 7. It says, and even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or organ, organ except they give distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the, light, by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I speak of the barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So that, that right there tells us there are many sounds out there, and those sounds will have an effect on us. Um, the one that, that is really easy to understand, we said, who shall prepare himself to the battle if uh, the trumpet given an uncertain sound? We all can relate to that. Um, you know, when they, when they play that... Uh, I know that probably wasn't a good invitation to that, but that was called a battle. And if the, but if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, how are they supposed to know what they're going to do? So music is used to communicate. And so it is a language in itself. Language primarily, when we, when we talk and speak uh, a language, we primarily communicate ideas. And we secondarily create, uh, communicate emotions. And we, create, we can communicate emotions by the way we talk, by our voice inflections. Um, if I was to talk really happy and excited, I'm conveying an emotion to you. Um, but primarily, I communicate, we communicate with language, we communicate ideas, secondarily, emotions. Music, on the other hand, primarily communicates emotions. Because the music is what hits your heart first, more so than even the words. In fact, we're going we're gonna to do a little, uh, dive into that a little later on. We're going to find out that words have just 7% of what music, when, is, when it's presented to you, a song, singing at the pulpit, singing a, a special, only 7% of that, it's, it's the music itself, the tone of the music, and all the instrument, the, the piano, the voice, together, is what speaks to you more so than the words itself. You'd be, you'd be above the average person if you really listen to the words I mean, I do. I, I listen to the words of the song, and I would think that most of us do. But how many of you can think back to your old days and take, you know, I hit to unscrew your halos here a little bit. Uh, think back to some song that you knew when you were a teenager. I'm not talking to you teens now, of course. But how many of you can remember a song, and, you, and all you can remember is like three words of the whole song, or just part of the chorus, and that's all you can remember. That's because the words didn't speak to you nearly as much as the music did. The music speaks to you much more than the words do. Words are tibid things. That's one of the things that, uh, that they use in that, uh, in that book. They, one of the phrases, words are timid things, but uh, rhythm is bold. Primarily it communicates emotion. Secondarily, it communicates an idea. So it's just the opposite. It hits, it hits your soul first. It hits your mind and your soul and your body first. 
Music language comparison. In language, we use letters, make up words, words make up sentences, sentences and par make up paragraphs, paragraphs make up chapters, chapters make up books. We do language with head, eyes, mouth, extremities, hands, and feet. So when we talk, some of us more than others use our hands. But as you can see, we use all those, all those same things. Now let's compare that with music. In music, we use notes, make up chords, chords make up phrases, phrases make up sections, sections make up movements, and movements make up composition. We do music with head, eyes, mouth, face, extremities, and hands. So do you see the comparison between music and language? They're really close. With language, we write, compose, we think, we create, we think, we get inspired, we formulate ideas. With music, we write, we compose, we create, we think, we get inspired, and we formulate ideas. See how close they are? Music is a language. Language rules of grammar and syntax, sounds with different pitches, sounds with varied durations, sounds with dynamics, sounds with different timber. The different timber would be, for instance, if I was up here speaking, and all of a sudden Brother Salini or Pastor Salini started speaking, you'd be able to tell the difference between our voice because we have a different timber. It's like if you listen to an orchestra, you can tell the difference between a trumpet and a clarinet. It's because they have a different timber. Um, but we do that in language, too, at the same time. You know, we all have different voices. We all have different timbers. Music, rules of composition and harmony, sounds with different pitches, sounds with varied durations, sounds with dynamics, sounds with different timbers. Music and language are so closely related. Scientists have always been intrigued by the connection between music and language. The sounds of music and the sounds of language are intricately, intricately connected. In short, the building blocks of music are to be found in speech. Uh, what we do know is that they both come from the same system, and it is this that shapes our preferences. In fact, I heard a, I heard a man one time with one quote saying, you, uh, you show me a person, what per show me the type of music a person listens to, and I'll tell you what kind of person they are. Because music does shape your preferences over time, over time. No matter how the connection between language and music is parsed, what is apparent is that our sense of music, even our love for it, is as deeply rooted in our biology and in our brains as language is. So with language, we think, we ponder, we consider, we muse. The root of music means to think, to ponder, and to consider. So is there any questions why music is called the language? So now we've determined that. Now here's a, this is a syllogism. A syllogism is a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion. Now that little red dot that you see up in the corner, that means this is going to be on the test at the end. Oh, I, I didn't forgot to tell you that was a test at the end. Believe it or not, that is what that means, but not for you. I, I had that when I taught that curriculum. I wanted my kids to know, I wanted them to learn this. And so I told them what was on the test. Because if you see something with a red dot on it, it's on the test. So they all got those right. But at least they knew it. So since music is an emotional language, so this is a solo with a major premise, since music is an emotional language, and since some emotions are wrong for the child of God, Therefore, some music is wrong for the Christian. Does that make sense? All this is, all, I, all I'm really doing is talking common sense up here when you really think about it. But so often we don't really think that deeply about the subject of music and how it impacts us. Let's be even more clear about it. Some, some say emotions are amoral. Well, let's examine that. Art has language, graphics, and sound. Is there good language? Of course there is. Is there bad language? Of course there is. There are good graphics, and there's bad graphics. And there's good sound, and there's bad sound. Now let's take a look so that we conclude that, conclude that, that arts are moral. Arts have moral value. They can either have a moral value or an immoral value, but they're not amoral. They, are, they have a morality to it. Emotions. We have hate, we have anger, pride, fear, lust, love. Aren't there good and bad of every one of those? 
hate, a good hate is to hate Satan, right? Uh, a bad hate would be to hate God, right? Love, a good love, a good, uh, a good uh, love would be to love God. But a bad love would be to love Satan. I mean, you, you, there's, there's extremes to both. So there's good and bad hate. There's good and bad anger. There's good and bad pride. You know, when you think about, um, Pastor Schlini was talking about the, the girl's soccer team and how proud he was of the testimony. That's a good pride. But the Bible tells us that uh, pride cometh before a fall. So we know that there's a bad pride as well. There's a good fear and a bad fear. There's a good lust and a bad lust. And a good love and a bad love. The dynamics of emotions and the arts are very similar. Conclusion is, emotions are moral. They're not amoral, they're moral. They have a morality to them. Music is a universal language. Daniel 3.7 talks about Nebuchadnezzar. I, I uh, talked about this before the last time I spoke. Ne King Nebuchadnezzar could have used the giant gong. He could have raised the flag. He could have shot a flaming arrow, smoke signals, a loud horn, a hundred different ways that he could have gotten a people's attention to get them to bow down to the image that he wanted them to bow down to. But he didn't. He chose music. Why music? Because music is a tool with which to influence emotions and behavior. And the Bible, the authority in our lives, substantiates that fact. Dynamics of communication. Results of a study, communication of psychologist, uh, Dr. Albert Meharabian. How much, what percentage is communicated through words, voice, and face? This is going to shock you. This was a test that he did. 7% is communicated through words. Voice, 38%. That would include your timbre, your voice inflections, the way you use your voice. Um, you know, when somebody's... How many, how many of you... I don't know if you have, anybody will remember this. How many remembered there was a, a commercial on a number of years ago, a TV commercial, and where they would have uh, two people standing there talking to one another, and they would be talking to each other. They'd be saying one thing, but their voices would be conveying another. Did anybody ever remember that commercial? Am I the only one that ever remembers that? They, they would be standing there, they'd be hollering at each other, but they'd be saying I, how much they love each other, but they'd be screaming it at each other. And so what they were saying didn't match with their voice inflection. We, we can, can do, do the same, same thing with music. When, when Joshua, Joshua came down from the mountain, what did he hear? He heard war, what he thought was war. Why did he think it was war? There had, to have been, there had to have been something that sounded like war in order for him to think that. Face, 55%. 55%. This is why it's so important. I hope Steve doesn't get embarrassed, but I'm going to use Steve Brown as an example. When Steve stands up there and sings, he smiles all the time. He's always got a smile on his face. That communicates tremendously. When you make eye contact with somebody and you smile, I have a hard time smiling. For some reason, my smile just doesn't go, just doesn't go that way. Yeah. Um, but the, the way that if I'm standing up there and I'm singing a, a special and all of a sudden I make a mistake if I don't allow my face to show that mistake you might not even know that I made a mistake that's awful hard to do when you make a mistake it almost always you, it shows on your face but you do communicate things with your face. 55% is with your face. That's why when uh, Brother Brown and I stand up before the choir and we're standing there, of course, we've got our backs to you. We're always going to the choir. Smile. And so then you see the choir. Everybody starts smiling at once. And, but it's important. 93% through means other than words. Who are we? We are the people who claim, we claim to have the truth through our music, who we are then our music becomes a very important truth statement. Yet that statement music is often nonverbal. Another syllogism, a, a major premise, a minor premise and a conclusion, major premise is music is a form of communication. Two, it's possible to have good and evil communication. Therefore, we can conclude that it's possible to have good and evil forms of music. And we'll dive into that even farther. I don't know how much we'll get into tonight. I can be honest with you. I can't remember 
everything just kind of scrambles together in my head here, but music is a language, music is a universal language. Music is a spiritual language. With over 500 direct references to music in the Bible, we can certainly conclude that music is a very weighty issue to God. I think I imparted that to you before. It is so important, and we're going to find out even more as we go along. David Thames says, like human nature itself, music cannot possibly be neutral in its spiritual direction. Materialistic humanism devoid of genuinely regenerative spiritual value. Petra then, this is Petra, back when they first started. Petra, by the way, is a, is a uh, supposedly a Christian rock band. Petra now, Petra then. I don't know if it's going to yeah, it's going to go. I'll, I'm going to try playing this for you. I don't know if this if the sound will come through or not. Well, the sound's probably not on the laptop. That's right. You really don't trust me. Trust me. It's rock. It's there's not nothing Christian. There's nothing Christian about it. It's rock. And uh, the example, if I if the example played. Uh, you would see for sure that that it definitely sounds like rock. And uh, The Hole in Our Soul, written by Martha Bales, she says, how would, they say, how would Martha Bales describe and evaluate Petra's sound? Since heavy metal lacks aesthetic sophistication in the realms of music, language, visual art, and theater, its sole claim to our artistic seriousness lies in its perversity. It's ironic that for all mutual antip uh, antipathy, heavy metal and disco came to resemble each other in this respect, pounding monotonous rhythm that carries sensual feelings to dehumanized extremes. Job 14.4 talks about, can, can you get anything clean out of the unclean? Now that may not be a, a musical verse, but that certainly can be a verse that we can apply. You're not going to get something clean out of something that's unclean. Why Johnny can't tell right from wrong. The rock can't be made respectable. The music will simply subvert the words. No matter how many reforms are attempted, rock and rap will always gravitate in the direction of violence and uncommitted sex. The beat says, do what you want to do. It's not the lyrics. It's the beat. A medium so powerful as music, packed with such great emotional, spiritual, moral, and physical influence over God's highest creation, needs to pass under the magnifying glass of Scripture. Rather than being dismissed through the neutral pretense of taste and preference, music is an important issue. And, and think about that, what, it said, what it's saying, rather than being dismissed through the neutral pretense of taste and preference. I don't know how often I've heard somebody say, talking about a specific gen, uh, uh, genre of music, you know, but I like that. I like that. I prefer that. Should our preference really come into play there when it comes to trying to judge what's, what's right for us to listen to? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that, uh, that, we, that our flesh might prefer, but it, that, that shouldn't be the deciding factor. We need to pass it under the magnifying glass of Scripture. The Hurried Child by David uh, Elkind, Elkind estimated that six hours daily directed not so much of the, to the conscious as to the unconscious, thus too easily dismissed. Parents don't even think about what their children listen to sometimes, and they don't, they don't think of the fact that it's speaking to them unconsciously, to their unconscious as much as it is to their consciousness. Music gets secret influence through the ages, Cyril Scott Music has thus the power to form character. Some Christians recoil and say, only God can form character. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Manners are the fleshing out of character. Again, is it a music verse? Does it speak about music in that verse? Not at all. But can we, can we draw an application to that? If, especially given the fact that we just talked about how music is a language. Music is a language, and it does have the ability to affect you uh, one way. It's going to affect you for good, or it's going to affect you for bad. An important resolution. That which is neutral, obviously, cannot impact character. 
However, once we ascribe or attribute morality to an entity, it must, by its very nature, have the capacity to affect and influence character. It is inconsistent and illogical to contend that music is moral and that its influence upon character is neutral. Does that make sense? Let me read that again. That which is neutral obviously cannot impact character. However, when we ascribe or attribute, attribute morality to an entity, it must, by its very nature, have the capacity to affect and influence character. It is inconsistent and illogical to contend that music is moral and its influence upon character is neutral. You know, sometimes I have to read things twice. It's like, you have to try that in your Bible reading. Anybody ever do that? I've, I've sometimes taken a Bible and I'll read, I'll read one whole line and then I'll go back and read that line again, especially when I catch myself just getting to the end and not realizing what I read. It's, uh, it's nice sometimes to go back and read it twice. It just helps you uh, comprehend better. Okay, that is the intro. I think we got enough time to get into chapter 2. That was the intro in chapter 1. I'm going to now go to chapter 2. And chapter 2 is new life, new music. Why is that not opening it up? Let's try that again. There we go. Come on. Okay. You're seeing a different screen than I'm seeing, but that's all right. New life, new music. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. This one here, we already we already went over. That was one of the most important verses that I said uh, that uh, I believe God's word has. God's word has Ephesians five nineteen. Of course, we could go back to five eighteen and read the prefacing, but five nineteen says, "Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord." Hebrews two twelve saying, "I will declare thy name unto my brethren." In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Isaiah 12, 5. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Psalm 92, 1. A psalm or song for the Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Psalm 149, 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Are you seeing, are you seeing a pattern here? What's, what's he referring to almost in every, every verse so far? A new song. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not the Father, is not of the Father but of the world. So again, we're talking about some verses that aren't necessarily musical verses, but can we apply them to our musical standards? Absolutely we can. Psalm 89, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Psalm 119, 54, Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. 6930, I will praise the name of God, with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Listen to another well-known educator who taught at University of Chicago and wrote the bestseller. This is Alan Bloom. Rock music has one appeal, a barbaric appeal to sensual desire. Not love, not eros, but sensual desire. Undeveloped and untutored, rock gives children on a silver platter with all the public authority of the entertainment industry. Everything their parents always used to tell them that they had to wait for until they grew up and would understand later. So the, the, the emphasis in this chapter is new life, new music. So when you get saved, you get a new life. At the same time, you, get, you should get new music. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. 
salvation, strength, and song. He has delivered me from the penalty of sin, so I belong to him. He has delivered me from the power of sin. I can serve him in his strength. He has earned my praise, therefore I sing a new song. As God is salvation and God is strength, so is God, so God is song. Let me back up here a little bit. I Exodus, let, let's take our, take our Bible and turn to Exodus 15 too for a minute. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. And then turn over to Psalm 118, 14. Psalm 118, 14. Got to get past the, all the pages of 119. Verse 14, the Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. I just wanted to go back and read those because they, they, uh, they put them in here. I figure if, we did, if they put them in here, they must have something to do with music, something we needed to see. So. What else can we conclude? Now, God is the source of our strength. God is the source of our salvation. God is also the source of our music. He should be. Therefore, the music in the believer's life must reflect his character. And what is his character, God? Holy, holiness, justice, righteousness, order, purity, beauty. Those are the things that our life is supposed to have in them. Can we, can we have, if we have those things from God, those attributes of God, if we have those in our lives, is it possible that we could listen to the type of music but not glorify them? Ephesians 5.1, help us further understanding concerning the believer's music. Be ye therefore followers of God, holiness, order, justice, righteousness, purity, beauty. Literally, be imitators of God. A music verse? No, it's not a music verse. Music application? Absolutely. How? I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. The Bible says we are his workmanship, created unto good works. And we ought to behave ourselves in such a way that the word of God be not blasphemed. Let's see how we do on that time. We're getting close, folks. All right, examine everything carefully. Thessalonians 15, 21. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, David Tay wrote The Secret Power of Music. When comparing the classics and the 20th century music, spiritual level of the two is a question of motive, and the goal of the music is a fundamental question of morality. Music is an experience. Experience molds about a third of our char character. Judging from psychological studies, therefore some portion of this portion of our character traits is the result of the music we hear. Think about that. Think about what that's saying. Music is an experience. Experience molds about a third of our character. Judging from psychological studies, therefore some portion of the proportion of our character trait is the result of the music we listen to. Music molds character. If, as Aristotle teaches, as few would deny, character results from habit, from repeatedly acting and feeling in certain ways, then surely sufficient exposure to a certain kind of music, along with the feelings it inspires and actions it encourages, can form one's character. Music and character are inextricably intertwined. Interpreting popular music by David Brackett, popular music reminds us that all music arises in social context. We remember a piece of music and return to it again and again because it means something because it has the power to change our lives. All things new. New life includes new music. 
where it should, and now consider the Lord's goodness. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. He heard my cry out of a horrible pit, out of the clay. Let me back up a little bit, because if I'm not mistaken... I think it's Psalm 40. Turn, turn to Psalm 41.3. We're almost done. We've only got a couple more. Uh, Psalm verse, chapter 40, verse 3. 1 through 3. That's what he was referring to on the next slide. Blessed is he that considered the... Oh, wrong one. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. And he heard my cry, and he brought me out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto, unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. So he inclined unto me, he heard my cry, pulled me out of a horrible pit, put me out of, pulled me out of the clay, set my feet upon a rock, established my goings, and he completed it, the transition with a new song. A music important is music important in a believer's life? You bet you it is. It is extremely important. I do one thing, God responds sevenfold. A closer look at Ephesians five, ten and eleven, the positive and the negative, held in proper perspective, can result in tremendous growth rings. Marvelous growth rings. That concludes the second chapter. The first chapter, of course, was why should we why should we even bother studying music? And the second chapter being the fact that now that we're once we're saved, we should we should embrace a new music, a new song that God's put in our heart. And that concludes this, and I did it two minutes early. How'd I do? All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, Father, thank you for thank you for music, first of all, Lord. It's such a precious gift. Help us, Father, to realize just how important it is in our life and how important it is that we listen to the right kind of music and that we use the right kind of music in our church services. And I pray, Lord, that you'd bless uh, as we progress through this series uh, down the, in the future and just ask, Lord, that you'd give us a, a yearning to learn more about what you have for us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.